What is happening guys? Welcome back to Ripper's Garage. And this was our Supercharge 440 experiment. So this is an AMR 300 blower from Japan. This is a 300 CC supercharger off of K cars and things like that, small vehicles in Japan. And we tried to do a blow through setup using the propane. Now I'm actually glad this didn't work because it was pretty dangerous. Once I figured out how a propane regulator works, it's basically just a diaphragm that every time there's vacuum pulled on that diaphragm from the intake valve opening, it lets propane in. So if we would have actually got this thing to start and it would have pushed boost through this tube, it would have went down into the diaphragm of that propane uh, regulator and it would have busted it and we could have had a massive propane spill. So good thing it didn't work. It was all learning, you know, a learning adventure. So now it's time to make this thing work. I think it looks awesome. I like the packaging. It is a little bit bulky with this tubing, but that's the only way to really get this bin without cobbling up some crazy stuff. I could do a box set up that bolts to the head that just comes straight up like a tower box and then curve the outside to shrink this down quite a bit. But I think it's fine just the way it is. I think it looks good. So what we need to do is remove this factory carburetor, completely get rid of it, and we need to put a carburetor on the intake side of the supercharger using it as a draw-through setup. The benefits of this is you're not going to blow fuel everywhere from your carburetor. If we're blowing through it, then all those orifices and stuff, all the passage in the carb is going to receive boost. It's going to fill the bowl up with boost and make a mess, and it is ever going to run it properly. You can build an atmospheric box around the carburetor and basically pressurize the atmosphere around the carburetor but that's more work than I want to do, to be honest, uh, because I know a draw-through setup work. The only disadvantage of a draw-through setup where the carb is before the supercharger is we don't have really good throttle response. Like my supercharger buggy likes to idle and it likes to be wide open. It doesn't like to just creep or cruise. It will, but it's just like trying to lurch forward. The thing is like, I want to go, I want to go. So we're going to try that on this setup. But one thing is I'm not going to use the factory carb. And I'm also not going to use a Makuni because the slide set up in a Makuni, if there's boost pressure sucking against that slide, it can stick our slide and we could get a wide open throttle, stuck it wide open throttle problem, and that would be dangerous. So we need to figure up some sort of butterfly carb to put on the other side of this uh, supercharger. So what we have to do today is pull this carb off. You have to slap on Go Power Sports little intake. This is for a 420 or a 440 cc engine, and it also already has a 1/8 MPT barb so we can ruin our boost gauge off of that so in the last video we didn't have a boost gauge because we were just trying to see if it would even run so i got a glow shift boost gauge that we can run to actually see if we're making boost uh, other than that we got a little coupler that adapts from the size that this go power sports intake is up to the one and a half inch that our inner filler popping is we might have to extend this pipe a little bit but i'm hoping between the length of this and this coupler we won't have to do that so Let's pull this carb off. We can also remove the governor now. At first, we're just gonna pin the governor back just for testing purposes. And then we'll eventually billet flywheel, billet rod, and put a cam that's specifically built for a supercharger. So let's get into it. Now, the only difference between this carb and a standard carb this propane carb has a barb that shoots directly into the throat of the carburetor. So that silver barb with the blue cap, that is a propane. It also uses some sort of vacuum off the intake side before the butterfly to help do the pressure to keep it idle, and I'm assuming. But we'll definitely keep this because this is a good carb to use in the future on a propane setup. One thing we're definitely going to have to do is remove these studs. We don't need them when we're using this intake. But we do have this spacer back here. Now the spacer is pretty nice because it keeps heat from transferring from the head to your intake. But a lot of times when you run something like these Makuni adapters, uh, you have to take that off because it does have this little vent, this little groove cut uh, will allow a vacuum leak. But I think we can still use it with this Makuni because it'll seal that entire area off. So what we're gonna do is pull these studs out by backing two nuts against each other, pull the studs out, and then we can put nice long stainless allens. We can leave this spacer to give us, and that's gonna help with our spacing to our new uh, intercooler piping. So you can back two nuts against each other, or you can just use some boss grips and grab a hold of it and spit it out. So 
So the port of this is a lot larger than this, uh, this back plate. So we can trim that out, but I'm not worried about this right now. We're just trying to get it to work. So we're not worried about like ultimate max performance. We'll do that when we start porting the head and things like that. So this will work out just fine. So I need to get a barb. I'm going to assume I need to pull apart our boost gauge and see what size barb we need. All right, so we have everything mounted. That tube is extended and on there very well. So now we can take off the governor arm and just throttle arm because we don't need it anymore. Several days later. All right, so we have the carve in the mail. So this is a Polaris 500 or a Magnum 350 carburetor. That'll pop in there. We'll get it aligned and we can tighten that up. But since we removed the factory carburetor, we now have to remove the governor, which that sucks because we have to pull all this off. So unfortunately we do have to pull off this front cover to get the side cover off to remove the governor and we gotta install some 18 or some 50 pound springs from Go Power Sports. Um, everything will be linked in the video description. So this is the first big block that I've seen with the automotive style keepers in it. Uh, so normally what holds the valve spring in is the top cap that pushes down. You can move it to the side and pop it out. And those are kind of lightweight style keepers where these have the automotive style split keepers. So you have to push this top hat down and use a magnet to pull out the two individual keepers. This is a much better design that they're putting on these big blocks now. But unfortunately we do have to remove the head to get to these properly with my valve spring compressor which means pulling the charge pipe the fan shroud this heat duct uh, we'll go ahead and remove the exhaust it's a lot more work and we're probably going to ruin our head gasket when we do that but it's the only way to truly do that now a big block will float the valves around 45 to 5,000 rpms are much worse than a small block so it's really important that you install the 50 pound valve springs when doing any kind of modifications when you're removing the governor So on a big block, the governor gear is right on the side cover. So all you have to do is take a punch and knock out that pin there. And then you can thread a quarter inch bolt with some red Loctite straight into that hole. You don't have to tap it or anything and it'll block it right up. So that's all we have to do. We don't have to worry about fiddling with getting that pin out of there. Uh, like the old style way, we just knock that full pin out, thread a bolt in, probably like a half inch to an inch long bolt. And like I said, just put a lock washer as well as red Loctite and you're good to go. And then the arm, just simply we rotate the crank over till we can get this arm out, slide it out, and then we need to drill and tap that. So we're probably going to have to pull the entire supercharger off of this engine here. We can also remove the low oil sensor. It's just down here in the bottom, there's a black box and then a bolt that goes through the back. We're actually just going to leave it for right now because we don't want to get into any more than we have to. We're just trying to do all that we need to do to get this thing up and run it.
All right, so we tried the player Sportsman 500 car off camera because I was trying to speed this video up a little bit and it would not run for anything. And then I pulled the bowl off, let's face it, it's Chinese knockoff player's 500 car. And the problem with it is it's leaking gas everywhere. It's inside the car. It was a $50 Amazon car, but what did I expect? But, uh, so I just said, you know what, we're gonna try a slight carb, even though this is not what you would wanna run on this setup, because the boost could cause such a vacuum effect, it could hold the slide open, as we've talked about in these videos. It's high idling, I don't know if we're lean or rich yet, I have no clue to tell. We're just trying to hear this puppy run. It is making 10 pounds of boost when we rev it up. I'm a little scared. So, uh, let's try this. I gotta start it with a pry bar. <laughs> so we'll turn the choke on. This is not the car because I'm having to really pull the throttle. It's sucking it so it won't let it pull. It's returning fine, but I still wouldn't trust this on the go-kart. We're over, like, we're pushing way too much boost. I don't know where our RPM is at because I don't have a spare RPM gauge. Took up what we're going to work on in the next couple of weeks. I want to build a stand that we can put outside and, like, anchor down with a pedestal like this so we have a throttle, the gauges all on it. I know that's what the dyno is. Basically, we can set it up on the dyno and fold it to it. So we're at 15 pounds of boost. Supercharger gets more. The intake tube is warmer than I thought it. Like, that's hot touch. And we're trusting Harbor Freight for accuracy here. <laughs> uh, but 15 pounds moves is way too much. We're going to have to put a bigger pulley on the supercharger or a bigger pulley on the in or a smaller pulley on the engine. That's what the way I want to go. A smaller pulley on the engine because the supercharger is a proprietary pulley. I don't even know what you can get for those. Alrighty, fellas, this thing made 15 pounds of boost and probably would have made more if we would have jetted out the carb. This carb was running super lean, and you can tell because we pulled the spark plug, and of course we knew it was running lean from the way it was acting. There she is. We knew it was running lean from the way it was acting. Uh, this is just right out of the box, the way it's from Go Power Sports. You normally have to jet them up just a little bit. Uh, idle jets normally are fine, but the main jet you do have to play with. So... I'm not gonna worry about turning this in until we get our pulleys in the mouth. This is a four inch pulley, but the belt is sticking in it, making this a three and a half because it's setting so far in the pulley. So really we're running a one to one ratio. We need to be under driving this supercharger. So what I'm gonna end up doing is buying a bigger pulley for the supercharger. And this won't be an issue because we'll just push it back, run a longer belt. 
uh, but we can buy a bigger pulley for the, the supercharger. This is a three and a half. Uh, this is basically a three and a half again, because it's sitting in there. I think I'm going to go up to a four and then a four and a half and, uh, start playing with it. We'll jet it out in the next video. We'll start playing with these pulleys. We'll get it right. Then we're going to find something to install it on to see the power. Also next episode, we're going to be installing a bill of flywheel from go power source because this is getting dangerous, uh, with the power levels. So, uh, pretty excited though. I do think it's going to have a sluggish throttle reaction. Uh, let us know of a carb you think that'll work good. That's a butterfly style carb. That's around 34 millimeter. That's the size I want to try to keep it around. So if you guys know, uh, if anybody's messed with Volkswagen carbs, I don't, I've never been around a Volkswagen carbs. So I don't know if they're hard to mount or what the dealio is with them. Just let us know. I uh, hope you guys like this video. Make sure to uh, like the video and comment down below because we're reading your comments. Check out the links to the stuff we used on this engine and uh, let us know what you want to see in the next episode. Of course, we're going to tune it out so we're around seven to eight pounds of boost. And of course, that boost is going to be more when we're under load. So this is dangerous levels right here, <laughs> uh, blowing the engine up. But uh, thank you guys for supporting us. Comment down below. And uh, remember, we love you. God loves you. We'll see you on the next one. God bless.